Upon a lofty throne I saw a man seated whom a host of angels adore, singing in unison, Behold him, the name whose empire is eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, today we've gathered together to pray for the intentions of Joseph and Kimberly Tran, and also for just in thanksgiving for the gifts of God's, the gifts that God has given. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain the strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth, Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. And Ahab said to Naboth, give me your vineyard so that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near my house. I will give you a better vineyard for it or if it seems good to you, I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral inheritance. Ahab went home resentful and sullen because of what Naboth the Jezreelite had said to him, for he had said, I will not give you my ancestral inheritance. He lay down on his bed, turned his, away his face and would not eat. His wife, Jezebel, came to him and said, why are you so depressed that you will not eat? He said to her, because I spoke to Naboth, the Jezreelite, and I said to him, give me your vineyard for money, or else, if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard for it. But he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. His wife, Jezebel, said to him, do you now govern Israel? Get up. Eat some food and be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. She sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who lived with Naboth in his city. She wrote in the letters, proclaim a fast and seat Naboth at the head of the assembly. Seat two scoundrels opposite him and have them bring a charge against him saying, you have cursed God and the king, then take him out and stone him to death. The men of his city, the elders and the nobles who lived in this, his city did as Jezebel had sent word to them. Just as it was written in the letters that she had sent to them, they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth at the head of the assembly. The two scoundrels came in and sat opposite him and the scoundrels brought a charge against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth cursed God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they said to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned, he is dead. As soon as she heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, 
Jezebel said to Ahab, Go, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. As soon as Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab set out to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lord, listen to my groaning. Lord, listen to my groaning. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to my groaning. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to my, my groaning. groaning. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as a shield. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to my, my groaning. groaning. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ, please be seated. So now we are in the, um, the, the meat of the Sermon on the Mount that uh, Jesus gives. And on Saturday, um, there was no public mass, but Jesus says that interesting statement where he says, do not make vows, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, and anything else beyond that comes from the evil one. And it's funny because when I first read that, it kind of seemed a little strange, and why would Jesus be saying don't do vows? But so he's not making prohibitions against things as such, but the mentality that's behind them. And then when I realized that, well, I realized that somebody told me, um, then I realized, I was like, oh, what is the attitude, uh, or what's, the, what's usually the first things that somebody who's not always telling you the truth says? You've got to believe me. I swear I'm telling you the truth. And it's like, uh huh. I, w I swear, I absolutely swear, everything I'm telling you is 100% true. And the most, the people with the greatest integrity that I've met just say this, yes, no, I did that, I did not do that. And that's it. <laughs> that's all that needs to be said. And... You don't need to go digging, and it's not as if everything they say is 100% true, and they will admit that. They'll say, from my perspective, this is what I did. I'm probably not entirely accurate, but for the most part, I know that this is what has happened. So they have a certain honesty and integrity about themselves, and they don't need to dress up everything that they do in a kind of flourish. Because the flourish is almost like a dead giveaway, that they themselves don't believe it. And they're almost trying to convince themselves. 
And so the tragedy is, is that this is where a lot of human deception comes from. It's not simply that they're deceiving other people, but that they've also deceived themselves. And the worst kind of friends are the ones that let you lie to yourself. The worst kind of friends you can ever have are the ones that would let you lie to yourself. And sadly, the worst kind of spouse that you can ever have is the one that does that kind of thing too. Um, today's first reading has the story of Jezebel and Ahab. And what's really important is when you read the story of Jezebel, don't just think like evil adulteress, bah! because what you do when you think like that, it's like, well, I would never be like that. Okay, well, here I am trying to be your friend. Yes, you will. <laughs> yes, you will. If anybody thinks that they will not be complicit in evil, watch out for that person. I would never do that. I'm a good person. First of all, that's against the teaching of the church. Second of all, it's against all common sense and experience. The person that always says, I swear I'm telling you the truth, is in the exact same category as the person who always lauds to you their virtues. Watch out. And this is the weird thing. So Jezebel is Ahab's wife, and you can picture in their relationship her own kind of twisted sense of virtue. I support my husband in everything that he does. I want him to be successful and... <laughs> and so Ahab, sadly, throughout this story of Elijah, and eventually through Elisha and everything else, has revealed himself to be a weak, weak man. And his weakness is a result of his lack of moral character. And this is why, for instance, the development of character is so important. Because if you don't develop your moral character, then you become just a victim for all the people that would want to manipulate you. I learned this when I realized that chastity is not only a great way of growing in the kingdom of God, it's a great armor against advertising. When you realize that a majority of advertising lies to you and says, this is um, where I learned it, by watching an Axe body spray ad saying, if you spray this on you, then women will jump all over you. And I said, well, that's stupid. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Why would somebody believe this? Oh, it's because they want it to be true. They want to believe that women are so dumb that if you spray yourself with a bad-smelling chemical, then they will jump all over you. And anybody that indulges that lie is not helping you. <laughs> and then not only that, like every guy, like every guy that I knew growing up would buy things they hated, do things they hated, and be things they hated to just have the affection of the pretty girl. And then eventually, she hated him anyway. Because she had no respect for a spineless guy that's always trying to be what he thinks she wants him to be. You'll notice that in the story today, Jezebel does not respect her husband. And for a number of reasons, she shouldn't. He's like, he goes to Naboth. N Naboth, who knows how to say his name. Um, he goes up to Naboth, whatever, and says... Why are you sad? And he's like, I wanted a vineyard that was next to my house. And the man said, no. Ugh. And of course, she says, ugh, to him. Are you not the king? And so she does that classic thing that you do around the week, which is, all right, you don't have the spine to do what you want to do. I'll do it for you. So she forges his name sends out a decree, which is a lie, gets scoundrels in order to make a false accusation against him, and then we will have him executed, and then when he loses his land, then you can just take it. And by the way, that is a more common thing than you'd think. To protect your own against justice 
to look out for one's own family against the truth. And this is why I said don't look at Jezebel as an entirely evil woman because she's all of us. How often have we been tempted to lie to prop up the misdeeds of our family members or our own? It's a common, common thing. And what's worse is we use our knowledge of goodness to do it. Now, she chooses and she wants two witnesses for a very important reason. Because according to the law of Moses, that is how a trial works. On the testimony of one witness, you can't accept the testimony. On the testimony of two witnesses, it then increases. Now, the justice, however, is this. If two people make an accusation that is proved to be a lie, then the people who made the accusation are punished according to the crime that they made the accusation of. So if the penalty is lose um, a $10 fine, of course they didn't have $10, but use your imagination. If, it, if the fine is a, 10, is a $10 fine, if you, lied, if you lied in the accusation, you pay the $10. If the penalty is death, then you pay the penalty. So that's why she picks scoundrels. She not only doesn't respect her husband, but she thinks, and if we're busted, it can't get back to us, and these two punks will die. It is the most, it's brilliant in its cunning and cynicism, but downright evil. But it's also meant to evoke a certain tone. The story, I mean. If you remember a little, uh, just, just about a century prior, what did King David do? He killed an innocent man to take his wife. And the prophet Nathan comes up to him and says, what do you think is the penalty for a man who were to steal another man's sheep and kill him for it? And David, in his moral, righteous wrath, says, the man deserves death. And Nathan's answer is, you are the man. And the strength of David's character is that even when he does a horrible thing, he trusts in the truth enough to admit it. And that is what a good friend should do. To be that person that you know is there to be able to say, dude, you are totally going on the wrong path. Those are the most valuable people in your life. The ones that won't support you when you're doing something wrong. Who will challenge you. Who will be willing to endure your hatred. Because you are not their idol, but God is their God. And so in today's gospel, Jesus continues this very important teaching and these dimensions for life. You have heard, to say that, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye, or a tooth for a tooth, or do not resist an evildoer. Again, um, you do have to think these processes through. But you'll notice what happens when we, if you listen to that part of you that fears this gospel, if you listen to that inner heart of you that fears that gospel, that is also the exact same voice that says it's just one small little lie. It's not hurting. I'm doing it for my own. You must be willing to lose the coat, to lose the money, even to lose the respect of the people around you in order to be seen as righteous in God's eyes. And that does not mean being morally perfect. It just means being honest. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I'm a sinner. 
And so the injustices of this world are an opportunity for your training, your training in righteousness. Because you know what the impulse is when somebody exploits you. It's to exploit right back. You hurt me, I'll hurt you. So much so that you know never to mess with me again. I know the tone, because I know the feeling. And sadly, if you go back into history's cycle of violence, that's exactly what every tyrant said. The communist said it to the capitalist, saying, you exploited me, now I'll exploit you. (laughs) Every revolutionary that topples kings did it in the name of righteousness. Every abusive relationship in the family has been built on this tragic foundation. It's not because we're not nice people. It's because we worship the wrong God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory. Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation." And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. 
He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead, and we proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis our Pope and Gary our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. What has passed our lips is food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart. What has been given to us in time may be our healing for all eternity. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly, says the Lord. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.